Hello and uh, hello and welcome to another video. So in this video, I'll be going over my GBP JPY trade. Uh, I think I've shared this trade before in a video where I think I, I titled it about how to find the true direction simplified. I'll just link up the video at the top here. Uh, and then I'll just want to go over because tomorrow we have the we have the interest rate decision from the Bank of England. Uh, we've just recently had uh, an interest rate decision from the Federal Reserve, which is the US Central Bank of the United States, and they actually pushed back uh, against rate hikes. So when I shared this uh, trade, where I think it was actually on the one hour. Let's just go to the one hour. Yeah, it was around here, yeah, around this area when I shared the trade, right? I had recently entered or took positions there, right? So currently, I think I'm over, over 200. Uh, approaching 240 250 pips in just a couple of uh days yeah but i'll just be going over this trade right here so let's just get into it right so guys you understand the data now uh you know what's happening when it comes to the data uh we went through the, Phil the phillips curve we went through inflation we went through gdp uh, so you should have a solid understanding or a solid basic foundation of uh, fundamentals right so we what we're gonna do we're just going to go over data for the UK economy uh, that we've had so far in January, right? Because I keep track of everything, of every data that we have in January. Uh, but this is essentially a summary uh, for for today's meeting that we had for the Fed. Uh, so in summary, no rate cuts in March, and uh, this is a bit of the on, this is a bit on the hawkish side than what markets were expecting as we see US dollar strength. So you can just pause the video and read through this if you want to have an idea of what, of what, of what was said during the press conference. And uh, essentially, but essentially to sum it up, there will be no rate cuts uh, in, in, in March. They push back against that. Uh, so that, yeah, that is just, a, that's just about it. And remember what I said in the, in the videos where I was teaching you guys about how to approach fundamentals. Whenever there is no rate cuts, that means that what? The currency follows interest rates if there's no rate cuts so that means that that currency should not go down which is why we saw strengthening of the u of the us dollar currency because they did not or because they pushed back against interest rate cuts in um, in march right so that is what we had there but that's not where i'm at i want to show you guys about the united kingdom so let's go to uk so let's find in the document okay so the first piece of data that we had okay let me do this so the first piece of data that we had when it comes to the UK, it was UK unemployment, right? So UK unemployment uh, remained unchanged at 4.2%, weight growth at 6.6% as expected. Uh, then, uh, okay, wage growth remained at 6.6%, expected was seven was uh, was 7.2 previously, right? So, sorry guys. So wage growth at 6.6% as expected uh 7.2 percent previously so we saw a slowdown in wage growth right so if you now go back to our to our table here we remember we said wage wage growth feeds into inflation so there is a slowdown in wage growth not not that inflation should go down but it is a positive thing on the side of inflation going lower so i just want you guys to to see how i break down data right and then so this boost the case for a sharper drop in inflation because wages are going down the job vacancies and workers on payroll declined supporting a case for a bank of england pivot to rate cuts so if job vacancies are declining and workers on payroll is declining that means that what more people are getting laid off right because there's no job vacancies there's no job openings so businesses are hiring less if businesses are hiring less that means that businesses are not growing right so that that is the just the basic logical way that you need to approach it and this was on the 16th this was on the 16th of of january right and then as i said we are awaiting on the uk cpi data expected tomorrow so we're expecting the united uh, kingdom uh inflation data the next day right so let's jump to that so next uh, then as you can see the next one was yeah here we are so UK CPI year on year increased 4% versus 3.8% expected so that was very high of an increase uh, then month over month at 0.4 versus 0.2 expected core CPI rose 5.1% versus 4.9% expected and core month over month uh, at 0.6 versus 0.4 expected so there was a 
clean surprise to the upside in UK CPI. So what does that do? If inflation is showing in as much as we got wage growth decrease the previous day, but now if inflation is showing that it, it is pu it pushed high or it's increasing, what does that do? That support what? A, that, that pushes back against an interest rate cut, but supports a what? A, 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 a hike, but in this case, they're definitely not going to hike. So it supports them holding rates at the current levels at which they are at, right? So the, it, is, it is not supporting an interest rate cut or a bearish or, or dovish message in the next meeting because inflation surprised higher. And that is what I summarized essentially with the, with the highlighted area, that services inflation edged higher to 6.4% from 63 services account for about 47 percent of the uk cpi so it's the biggest one in the uk uh, and that also increased to 6.4 from 6.3 and remember their target is two percent guys so that is almost like three times the target of the central bank at six point eight six percent core is sitting at uh, 5.1 that that's also more than double the target which is two percent so that is not good right so so the central bank needs to maintain their hawkish stance or their push that they're not looking to cut interest rates because inflation is still high or it's still sticky so that is how i approach the data as i'm reading it you know so i just want to give you guys that feel so all the data points all the data points to stick inflation which will push back uh, rate cut expectations and only make the job much harder for the bank of england this is bullish for gbp why do i say it will make the, the job much harder because on the other hand we have inflation that is persistent but when it comes to growth growth is slowing down remember when we, when we when we explain the inflationary gap where inflation is high it usually goes with what with growth right we in if we are in an inflationary gap it usually goes with growth but in this case we're seeing that growth is slowing down in the uk but inflation is still remaining elevated or high so what does that do it results in stagflation where there's stagnant growth but there's high inflation that is why i say it makes the job much harder for the bank of england because if it if, if inflation was falling then it would that it would have made the job much easier because then they would cut to support the economy that is slowing down but now if rates are remaining higher what do they need to do they need to keep interest rates higher and that will do what that will slow down the economy even further you know so that's not a good position to be in as a central bank and that is what i meant that it makes the job much harder for the bank of england right and then the next uh the next one that we had was see the next one that we had okay this was on the 19th it was retail sales so as you can see retail sales remember now when we when we went over okay let's zoom in a bit here So you guys remember when we went over GDP, right? What did we say? Retail sales are part of consumer spending, right? And then whenever central banks act or adjust monetary policy by increasing interest rates, what are they doing? They decreasing disposable income, which decreases consumer spending. So retail sales is part of consumer spending. And remember what I said, I said consumers as part of GDP, they are a big component, right? So now let us read this, what we had with, with UK retail sales in January. Retail sales uh, shot decline points to a new recession, right? Retail sales year over year fell negative 2.4% from 0.2 previously. So this was December. They fell, but they fell by negative 2.4 from 0.2. Uh, and uh, it, monthly they fell uh, to negative 3.2 from 1.4% previously uh versus zero negative 0 0.5 expected so this was the biggest drop since january 2021 this is worse especially because it's december figures even though the, the the november figures were higher which means that consumers did a lot of their spending in november and rather than december but it is not it's still not good because generally december picks up right uh so december's figures when spending is generally high and this points to a drop in consumer consumption and a squeeze on real income from high interest rates coupled with the high cost of living. This heightens stagflation risk, what I've just explained to you guys. In the UK, as CPI came in hotter on Wednesday, this is bearish to the pound. So that, that resulted in a sell-off of, of, of GBP because it was bearish, right? Because what? It shows that consumers are struggling if retail sales are dipping into the negatives from a positive jump in, in November. So that's definitely not good for the economy, right? So I, I hope you guys are getting the feel of how we look at the data, how we break down the data and uh, and and all of that right so uh, 
let's let's do this okay let me just delete this guys then we'll just keep on scanning it manually because i know i know this i thought this would make it easier if i just search there uh so then we went on then on mm, so it was this was on the 24th right so on the 24th we had pmis right uk manufacturing pmis pmis are essentially remember if we go back to to our diagram here that's why i said guys if you understand this video that i did on how to on how to actually or the quickest and the ease the quick this the easiest and the quickest way to understand fundamentals if you understand this video then a lot of things will fall into place because remember pmis i said it's business right it's purchasing managers index we're looking at business it's a survey of businesses uh services manufacturing so so that they can see what are their outlook for the future if if the out if the survey is good then that means that what they're expecting growth of the economy because remember also businesses are what they are an engine for the economy right so these are all things that you need to link two and two together right to make to make that that pattern so we had manufacturing pmi uh, came in at 47.3 versus 46.7 expected so that was slightly well, that was higher than previous but then remember when it comes to pmi anything below 50 is not good 50 and above that is expansion or an economy that's showing growth 49 and below there is an economy that is in contraction or showing what yeah showing a contraction essentially it's not growing right so in this in the manufacturing manufacturing sector that is what we saw services pmi very good 53.8 versus 53.2 expected composite pmi which combines both services and manufacturing came in at 52.5 versus 52.2 so services and composite were exceptionally good only manufacturing was in the is in the contraction territory so the, like i said pmi is improved for both the manufacturing in services measures although the former remains in contractionary territory which is the manufacturing so that was also good right so growth is not really that bad when we're starting to look at the data right growth is not really that bad even though retail sales was a very huge disappointment but growth overall is really really not that bad and then we had uk consumer sentiment is negative 19 from negative 20, 20 from negative 22 previously still in the negative right even though it's it's edge it edged slightly higher from negative 22 to negative 19 but still in it in the negative that's not good let us go back to our diagram here where's consumer confidence it's in the consumers right remember consumers or consumer spending is a big component of gdp so retail sales are down in the uk consumer confidence obviously it has been down for a very long time because of high inflation remember inflation went in went into double digits in the uk i think it was around 11 percent but over 10 percent in in 2022 so consumer confidence has been at all-time lows but then we've seen we're seeing weak consumer confidence weak retail sales pmi data it's good it's fairly good it's not that bad it's fairly good uh, so the big component two things in the big component of consumer spending that is not that that is showing weakness right so that is something to take note of as we go into this meeting i'm not saying they're gonna cut but i'm not expecting them to be as hawkish or to push back as aggressively when it comes to interest rate cuts if they do push back obviously that will send the pound higher it will strengthen it will strength, strengthen gbp but if they don't if they don't push back against in interest rate cuts not to say they they say we are going to cut but if they don't push back as they did in their last meeting then that should send gbp lower right so that is what we have uh we had with the uk consumer sentiment uh, and then let us see if we still had more data of the uk yeah no so that was odd because this this was all the data that we had today so yeah there was there, yeah there was essentially nothing today of much highlight but that is this that is the story that we that we have with the with the uk so this is all the data that we've had in january for the united kingdom uh so moving going into tomorrow's uh interest rate decision meeting this is all that not essentially all we'll be working with but obviously go into trading economics look at the trends that we've had but this is just the way we're looking this is the picture of how things look and like i said retail sales fell consumer confidence is is is, is in the negative territory pmi data is good uh unemployment uh and wages showed showed a way unemployment was good 
well not good but it's 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 in it's not that bad it didn't increase but wages went down so that that should not pressure the 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 bank of england to do what to hike interest rates but what we do what what we did we have the next day we had inflation that takes time right so anything that at the moment that should keep the bank of england from cutting interest rates is the fact that inflation came in well highly greater than expected right so inflation remains high so they don't want they because essentially they're hiking rates to do what to kill inflation so if inflation is being persistent they can't start cut, cutting rates so that is the only leg that they have to stand on when it comes to pushing back against interest rate cuts the fact that inflation came in greater than expected but other than that the other data is pointing to weakness i even did a video uh in december uh you can check the video i'll, I'll also uh link it up on top you can check the video there where, where i said that i'm expecting more pain for euro and gbp in 2024 so i i, I still maintain the same the same bias even though the, the the bank of england might push back against interest rate cuts but i think it will eventually catch up to them like i said the the risk of stagflation has increased dramatically right and stagflation is not good because high inflation no growth the longer interest rates remain higher, the more that the, the economy dips into a recession, right? So that is what we have right there when it comes to the UK economy. And obviously GDP is also not the greatest uh, in terms of growth. It's not in the negatives, but it's also not in the high positive. I think it's around zero point something. So that's also not, not, not good, right? But I just wanted to show you guys how I break down the data based on what I've taught you in terms of analyzing everything from the Phillips curve. Uh, and then how do you then come to forecasting or making your own expectations or what you anticipate from the market so for tomorrow i i don't expect much of a pushback in interest rate cuts but due to what we saw with inflation that might be the reason but if we look at all the other data that is negative for the pound uh there's more data that is not supportive of interest rate or of a pushback against interest rate cuts but more data is supporting that the Bank of England should at least consider or even start talking about interest rate cuts. Not like they did in their last meeting where they like, it's out of the window. We're not even going to talk about interest rate cuts. But in this meeting, I'm expecting, I'm anticipating that they should. And obviously, if they do, uh, what we're going to have. So if they do, then obviously, we will definitely see GBP, JPY fall even further, right? Uh, I think this was most most mostly because it was a uh, month in rebalancing probably that's why we saw this huge move lower but essentially that is what i'm looking at tomorrow so there is risk if they push back against interest rate cuts we could see gbp jpy push higher and maybe even potentially take me out at a negative uh, but if we get that if we don't get an aggressive pushback like we saw with the federal reserve where they said there will be no rate cuts in in march so there was strictly a pushback which is why we saw strengthening of the dollar if we get something like that from the bank of england then we could see prices push higher and then probably take me out but if we don't and they start saying that they're considering because they're seeing weakness of the economy they're considering or they now talking about interest rate cuts then we could see the pound fall even further and then obviously my trade will go further into profits but uh, yeah guys that's just what i wanted to do uh with this video just to put everything that i've taught you guys into practice so you can see it and then we'll have to see how things go uh tomorrow uh for the bank of england interest rate decision so until the next video and remember guys subscribe and if you found any value in this video share the video it won't hurt and obviously turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified when i upload another video and of course don't forget to like the video guys and definitely subscribe cheers